Welcome to section 13.11. All right, gentle people, in this lecture, we're going to start off by talking about this concept called formal charge. Now, formal charge is kind of a bean counting exercise. The idea is to compare how many electrons an atom brings in and how many electrons an atom gets out once it's bonded to something. So there's a formula that you guys can use to calculate formal charge. The formal charge is going to equal the valence electrons minus the lone pair electrons minus one half the bonding electron. Now what you'll notice about this last term is that half the bonding electrons equals the number of bonds. So you can write this equation either way. Now what I want you guys to know is that the formal charge can be calculated for each atom inside the molecule. So let's go ahead and show you an example. So in our last lecture, we drew the lewis Stratt structure of ozone. And I'm going to go ahead and label each one of these oxygens. So this is going to be oxygen A, the middle one's going to be oxygen B, and the last one I'm going to call oxygen C. And I'm going to go ahead and calculate the formal charge of each one of these oxygens. Remember the equation for formal charge equals the valence electrons minus the lone pair electrons minus one half the bonding electrons. And remember, half the bonding electrons can also be considered minus the bond. So let's do the formal charge of oxygen A. So oxygen has a valence of six. And in this case, I have one, two, three, four, lone pair electron. Now, what I can do is minus half the bonding electrons. So that's going to be one half. And the number of electrons that are being bonded here is going to be four. So in this case, the formal charge of that oxygen is going to be zero. Let's look at the formal charge of that middle oxygen. Again, we have a valence of six. This time, there are two lone pair electrons. And let's go ahead and count the number of bonds this time. So in this case, I have one, two, three bonds right here. So I'm just going to put minus three. So if I go ahead and calculate the formal charge, I get plus one. Lastly, let's do the formal charge of that last oxygen. Again, six is the valence of oxygen. In this case, I have one, two, three, four, five, six lone pair electrons. Now what you'll see is that if I do half the bonding electrons, which is two electrons, or I can say I have one bond, both of these are going to equal one, so it's going to be minus one at the end. This is going to give me a formal charge of minus one. So what this is saying is that the formal charge of this oxygen is zero, the one in the middle is plus one, and the one at the end is negative one. Now, if something has a formal charge of minus one, it tends to be a little negative. If something has a formal charge of plus one, it tends to be a little positive. Now, another thing that you can note is if you guys add up the formal charge. So if I were to go ahead and add up all the formal charges right here, what I get is zero plus one and negative one, or a total charge of zero. And this gets us to the last points. If your atom is neutral, summing up all the formal charges will give you zero. If your molecule is charged, then if you sum up the formal charge, the sum of the formal charge will equal the charge of the molecule itself. This is a good way to check if you did the formal charge calculation correctly. Now, going back to our structure of ozone, you might have asked yourself one question. And that is, I have the double bond between the leftmost oxygen and the middle oxygen. Couldn't I have drawn the double bond between the right oxygen and the center oxygen and come up with a valid Lewis dot structure? And what you'll notice is that both of these structures are equivalent to each other. And so to recognize this aspect when drawing Lewis stru structures, 
we are going to go ahead and invoke a concept called resonance. Resonance is used to describe when you can draw equivalent structures. What we're going to say is that neither structure are the true structure, but what actually manifests itself is that I'm going to get an averaging of this structure. When I go ahead and do this and take the average, what I see is I get a minimization of, of that average structure, also known as the resonance hybrid. And here's what I mean by that. If I can draw two equivalent resonance structures, I'm gonna draw them out, and then I'm gonna put a resonance arrow between them. A resonance arrow is a double-headed arrow. Now, what I want you to understand is that I'm not saying that the structure flips back and forth between these two structures. What this arrow means is it says, take the average of these two structures. And that mixture of these two structures is the true structure that I see experimentally. Because if I were to go ahead and say that this is the true structure, what I would see is I would see a double bond and a single bond. So I see two types of bonds if this were manifesting experimentally. But that's not what I see. When I do the experiment, I only see one type of bond, not two types of bonds. Now let's go ahead and take the average. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and label these atoms again. And so I'm gonna go ahead and take the average. In the first structure, the AB bond is a double bond. So a double bond, I'm gonna go ahead and say is two. In the second structure, the AB bond is a single bond. So I'm gonna put one for single bond. So if I add these two numbers up, two plus one, and I did that over two structures, so I'm averaging what the bonds were in these two structures, what I get is 1.5 bonds, or one and a half bonds. And so the resonance hybrid is the average of these two structures. So what I'm saying is that when I put these three oxygens together, the bond between the oxygens are not a single or double bond, but a 1.5 bond or a one and a half bond. You can do the same treatment with B and C. And what you will find is the average bond is 1.5 or one and a half bonds. And this is what I see experimentally. I see one type of bond that is somewhere in between a double bond and a single bond, a one and a half bond. You guys can do the same exercise with this nitrite ion. What you guys will see is there are three possible structures. I'm gonna draw the resonance arrow between each one of these three valid Lewis dot structures. And what I'm gonna say is the resulting resonance hybrid is the average of these three structures. Now I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys do this calculation by yourself, but if you guys take the average of this bond between let's say this top left oxygen, which we'll call oxygen A, and the nitrogen, what you guys will find is that this bond averages to one and one third a bond. And that is going to be true for each one of these oxygens. Go ahead and test yourself and see if you can derive one and a third bond. Now, one thing you have to worry about when drawing resonance hybrids is this last point. Whenever you draw structures, you wanna to try to minimize the formal charge. So let's look at this bottom example here with thiocyanate. Thiocyanate is SCN minus. What you guys can see is I can get a couple of valid Lewis dot structures. I can have one where the carbon is double bonded. I can have one where the carbon is triple bonded to the nitrogen and single bonded to the sulfur. And the last one I can see is I triple bond it to the sulfur and have it a single bond to the nitrogen. And then I can go ahead and calculate formal charges. And you can see the formal charge on each atom 
in each one of these Lewis dot structures. Now you'll know I crossed out the last resonance structure. And the reason I did this is because I can take a look at my formal charges. What I want to try to do with formal charges is I want to try to minimize that. And what I mean by that is get as close as you can to zero as you possibly can. So for these other two structures, what I see is I see zero, zero, negative one, negative one, zero, and zero. But in this last structure, I got a positive one and a negative two. So two things have a formal charge and I'm getting further and further away from zero because I'm two away from zero instead of just one away from zero. So what I'm gonna do is cross out that last structure and I'm gonna say, that the resonance hybrid is the average of these two structures, and that's what I see experimentally. All right, Kemwane, I hope that made sense, and remember to stay safe.